What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Guy Telling You the Music and Music Production News in front of a green screen with added commentary attempting to make you laugh. Before you say anything, yes, my producer tried to make me look pretty for the camera. Did it work? Do I look pretty? Or do I look like a PS2 character? It's a slippery slope. I asked her to put that powder sh they put on people's faces on TV. Next thing I know, she's filling out my eyebrows. If they freak you out, just look away. It won't always be like this. I feel like I look like that guy from Breaking Bad that owned the car wash before Walt. And she's over here laughing about it. I don't usually surf the web, but when I do, I browse. Fuck you and your eyebrows. Today we'll be talking about a few new interesting plugin releases, Moog changing locations and more. You guys may remember a while back, we talked about how Moog was being sold to In Music and a lot of people were worried about it because In Music has taken some pretty reputable brands down a pretty dark path. Now it turns out Moog is having to abandon their headquarters. Moog Music is leaving its iconic Asheville headquarters as company president Joe Richardson says that the workforce had to be rationalized following the in music takeover so you fucking killed them right i also like how it says in music takeover a hostile takeover where a lot of people were rationalized i can read between the lines i see what's going on here now obviously this building is one of the most recognizable in the synthesizer community i shouldn't even have to tell you what this is aside from the fact it says moog on the building but most of you probably know what this is even if it didn't say that so back when in music had bought moog a lot of people were worried they were going to start manufacturing in other places, you know, such as China, wherever. Generally, Moog is known for making their own stuff in their location. So this is probably some concerning news. What if I told you it's not as bad as people are making it seem? They're basically in the same city, but we don't know what that entails yet. On top of being a place where Moog synthesizers are made, they often host artist performances in the quote unquote sound lab. Ugh. Honestly, I think they have a meth lab in there. So I actually have some good news here. Anyone looking to buy this building, it is up for sale. Behringer has the opportunity to do the funniest thing right now. The move will involve a relocation of product design, development, engineering staff. They're moving to a second floor of a building in the same city. Now the Moog president, Joe Richardson, tried to paint this as a positive thing, stating that they are moving the company closer to the city center where so much creativity and musical expression lives. Now keep in mind, when in music, had bought Moog, they essentially laid off a large amount of people within a few months. Now this gets a little weird here. Guys, it is not an inside job, right? I had nothing to do with this. The Moog music president had stated, with any transition like this, where there is an acquisition, there's a number of roles that become redundant or roles that already existed in the organization. The workforce had to be rationalized, gunned down, to reflect this new consolidation business model. He also stated that the strategic move was considered with the aim of boosting job creation in the marketplace. Ironically, after laying off a bunch of people. Anyways, I hope the best for Moog, and I really hope in music takes their dick out of your ass soon. It seems we have an interesting new plugin for once. I know it's basically unheard of in the year 2024. It is called Visco, and it's kind of hard to describe. It seems a little bit like Synplant, but for drums, even that might not be the most accurate description. What they labeled it as a sample modeling drum machine. They state it is a beat maker, sound design tool, and live performance drum machine. It can model and manipulate any sample you supply. Essentially, you drag in the sample and it gives you this blob and you can manipulate the blob to change the sample. You can change the time scale and you can even blend between multiple samples. So it has an eight track, 32 voice drum engine. It turns any, it claims, they say they can turn any drum sample into a synthesized counterpart. It's pretty interesting because it allows you to create variations on old samples, as well as create new samples based off of other ones that are pretty much completely different. It has a mod matrix, a step sequencer, a mixer and effects section, presets. It costs 139 euros normally, but you can get it for 99 at the limited time intro price. Not sure how long that is, but it also has a demo. And apparently the demo gives you full functionality but with periodic prompts encouraging you to upgrade. So from what it sounds like, it sounds like WinRAR. In our next story, Tidal is introducing something that seems, I don't know, let's go look at it. So Tidal is introducing Circles, an artist to artist forum to a small number of creators. You heard that right, forum, Tidal. It's not 2010 anymore. Not that many people use forums. I'm sure this forum already exists. It's an early access, so you know if you're lucky enough to have access to it, you could talk to people 
very few people, I'm assuming, in this forum. It's basically a forum focused around experiences in the music industry. It is only available to artists in the Tidal Rising program and general rising artists. Yeah, guys, this is what passes for news at this point. I mostly just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was kind of dumb. At least the good thing about this is I'm assuming that there's not going to be a lot of trolling because that is one thing that kind of ruins forums in the first place. Like if you're asking for feedback, people will just tell you it sucks, you know, to fuck with you. Anyways, that was some pretty fucking stupid news. Thank you, title. In our next story, Reaper has released a script that does your taxes for you. In our next story, we have another plugin and everything about it is a weird name. Punk Labs One Trick Keys. And then the website, it's weird. Uh... It, it, like, it's almost like a jump scare. I don't know. Let me know if this scares you in any way. You know, I feel like it's a jump scare in the way that you're not expecting that. Like, I wasn't expecting the whole palm trees thing. So it is a physically modeled piano synth that they claim has a chill lo-fi sound. And it uses a vintage algorithm that was developed in Stanford in 1995. And then it has a variety of effects. It's got some presets, polyphony, only 25 presets, but hopefully they're quality. I mean, that second one sounds pretty legit. That first one sounded very clips, kind of messed up. It's kind of weird how there were only two demos for a product with no trial. A little tip here for companies going the no trial route, provide more demos. We have nothing to go off of. There is too large of a consumer trust gap here. Customers are gonna have to put a lot of faith in these two demos in order to buy this product especially when it's $79. Not that 79 is insanely expensive, but when it's like 20 or 40, people are more likely to trust that gap. Also, one of these demos is clipping. Not the best look. It costs $79. Don't believe there's an intro sale. I like the idea of like getting a realistic sounding, very vintage piano because RC20, it's cool, but it doesn't really sound real. Like, and that sounded a little bit more real. So this is very interesting. You may remember I talked about James Blake, who talked about the impact of TikTok on music. Well, he's landed on a solution, and it's Patreon. It's just fucking Patreon with a different name. It's called Vault. It seems like a great value Patreon sort of thing, but only focused on music. So technically, it's even more limited than Patreon, and currently, it only has James Blake on it, and you can pay him $5 a month for access to these three unreleased tracks currently. Great job, James. You've solved the devaluation of music by partnering with Great Value Patreon and then only putting yourself on it. Now, many people are calling him out for being out of touch because this is clearly something that has existed for quite some time. He posted a three minute video where he just goes through the motions explaining how little artists make in the industry due to Spotify, TikTok, etc. There are people accusing him of starting this entire commotion for a marketing tactic. I can't blame them for thinking that though. This being the solution is very underwhelming. Now, there's nothing wrong with going direct to consumer. In fact, it seems like a smart option these days, but it definitely requires a large audience of people that are willing to invest in you, essentially. A lot of artists don't have that option. They need to grow their audience first. And it is very suspicious that he is the only artist on there so far, and there doesn't seem to be an option to sign up. I can see why people would say all of this was just to funnel people to his vault for $5 a month where people can sign up for three songs, three unreleased songs. Okay, so this tweet from Vault says, what if making music was enough? Definitely some irony there because making music and posting at the Vault will not be enough. How are you gonna get your music heard? You can post at the Vault with zero followers and you will still have zero followers and zero dollars being made. I can definitely see why people are saying this was just a long con in order, well, maybe a short con actually, in order to get people to sign up for Vault and to give James Blake money. They're hard promoting James Blake in this announcement video here. They're not even, like it doesn't even say anything about whether or not you're gonna be able to add something eventually or if it's just all about James Blake. Shameless, just shameless. In our next story, we have a new plugin once again. This is a modern chorus effect by Minimal Audio named Flex. I know what you guys are saying already. Another chorus effect, a plugin that I already have as a stock effect in my DAW. Why should I use this? It seems to have more features. I know what else you're gonna say. Why are there so many plugins named after slang? We have several plugins named Flex, several plugins named Drip, 
I can't wait till the Bussy and Phantom Tax plugins drop. So it has 24 voices as well as two different modes, Smooth and Glass. Smooth utilizes human frequency perception to get what they claim is an exceptionally deep and rich sound. Glass uses multi-staging to achieve what they claim are listening stereo effects. One thing that is interesting about it is it has multi-band capabilities so you can preserve the low end when you're working on a bass and you just want to do the chorus on the mid and high frequencies. The normal Normal price is $49, but it is on sale for $29 currently. I was honestly expecting a much higher price for Minimal Audio, because while their name is Minimal Audio, their prices are generally kind of maximal. So far, it's not really impressing me a whole lot, but you know, it's a chorus. How good could it really get? The ability to do the multiband part could be valuable, I guess, depending on what you have available to you currently. In our next story, we got more plugins. Holy crap, they're all just coming out simultaneously, one after another, rapid fire. So Kilo Hearts decided to release two little plugins, the Shaper and the Shaper Table. The Shaper is free and it is a free form distortion. And the Shaper Table is also distortion, but not free. You can buy it for $19.50. Normally it is $39 and the sale ends in four days. So they quoted Wikipedia here saying, the sound produced by digital wave shapers tends to be harsh and unattractive because of the problems with aliasing. And then they say, clearly they never listened to Kilohard Shaper. Yeah, uh-huh, funny. Little self glaze there. A little bit of black magic trickery and any aliasing is kept to a minimum. You can create custom distortion shapes. <coughs> I'm like trash three. Or choose any shape from the factory library. Shaper table expands on the concept of the regular shaper. And let's use a table of data. For instance, a wave table. So you can scroll through the wave table and get a morphing distortion effect if you wish. They've included a large number of wave tables that you can use. And you're also free to create your own. Thank you guys for watching. If you press the like button, your crush will text you back. And if you don't do it, you'll get 5,000 years of bad luck. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here and share this video to 20 people. Otherwise, Busy Work Speeds wins the proxy war. If you want to support this channel, consider joining my Patreon or becoming a channel member. For as low as $5, you get access to exclusive content, outtakes, and other goodies. I'll see you guys next time.